If you look back at the car park video, you'll see it's very handy. Everything's cut and dried. Every possible combination of 20s, 10s and 5s will work. Get us to 25, deliver a ticket. If we turn to what we were talking about briefly at the end of that video, something like I'm in a program language and I want to uh, declare and identify a name for my integers. I want to call my integer Sean and Dave or even K9, I said last time. Well, they're fine, but if you want arbitrary length variable names, how do you say, I don't know whether it's going to be three letters long, five letters long or even 60 letters long. Maybe the compiler has an external limit anyway, but in general, how can we keep going round without knowing how many? And the answer, of course, is recursion. I'm now going to draw you a finite state automaton diagram for a programming identifier, yeah? And those of you from electronics engineering department, you can say, yes, we've known about these for years, they're just state machines. So here comes a state machine for identifiers. You have to have a starting point, we had in the car park, and we have to have one here now. And then, what I'm going to do is to say, well, in order to get started on a programming language identifier, the rule is you must start with a letter, not a digit. And I'll just den denote any letter for the moment by L. This state here which I'm calling the tailpiece of the identifier, is to take care of the fact, eventually, that identifiers could just be a single letter. It's perfectly possible to say int i semicolon. It's just a single letter identifier. So we've got to allow for that. It can be just one letter long. Or it can be a letter followed by any mix of letters and digits in any order. But eventually there has to be an end marker. And of course, typically in the C programming language, the end marker is semicolon. OK, how do we do that any mixture of letters and digits stuff? Well, here's something new. Inside this tailpiece state, I am saying you can go back into yourself by accepting more letters. Down at the bottom, I can say accept a digit. I'll call any digit just D at the moment. So can you see what's happening here? You go in, you must have an initial letter, but once you're in the T state, you can come back into yourself, and that is recursion. But as you go back and come back into yourself, you must accept a letter, or you must find a digit on the input stream. Eventually, the party's got to end. You can't keep recurring forever. No good at all. You will crash. You will run out of memory. So eventually there's got to be a way out of all this morass. And what I'm going to do, just so I can link up with what Noam Chomsky did, the great Noam really liked to think of everything as a legal sentence and called it S. We mentioned this already that, you know, in car park language, a legal sentence is 10, 10, 5, because it adds up to 25 and so on. But to get into this final state, which sometimes is called the finish state, sometimes equally is called the accept state, then I need to see an E, and an E is a valid end marker. And I'm saying that in for this subset of the C programming language we're doing here, the end marker will be a semicolon. I might later on extend that a bit because if I do some awk examples, I want to be able to accept new line as being an end marker as well. But for the moment, let's say, yes, it's semicolon. So that's it then. That is a state machine. The factor that's new in it is the ability to do recursion for as long as you want until you finally bottle out the whole thing and take the end mark and say, that's the end of my declaration. OK, well, what emerged from all of this stuff about state machines and from Chomsky's work in the mid to late 50s, for every machine you can draw, like this, and this is a machine interpretation of identifiers, there's always a grammatical alternative. And the more, if you like, mathematical theoretician you are, the more you like rather abstruse, so-called top-down ways of thinking about things. So Chomsky's notation, let me just start you off on this for this, was to say, look, my goal is a sentence. But what seems to be the case is that to get to sentence, I've got to take, first of all, an L, and then that gets me into a T state. OK, Chomsky notation. You can read the arrow as being is defined as. A sentence is defined as an L, 
any letter, followed by what I'll call a tail or a tailpiece of the identifier, L and T. Fine. Well, what? let's just do one example of what a T can be. A T, look, let's take this one, can be further defined as yet another letter followed by another T. Now, look what's happening here for the first time. A rule for T is developing another visit into a T on its right-hand side. This is technically called right recursive. And the Chomsky rules say you can be right recursive. If you want to do it the other way around, perversely, and do T becomes TL, that's okay. That's still within the Chomsky rules. It can be purely right recursive or purely left recursive. I'll make it right recursive. It's a bit more intuitive to me. And just in case you think, well, this is going to go on forever and I can imagine a T becoming a DT and you're taking digits forever. What's the thing that gets you out of all this in the end? And the answer is, well, look back at the automaton diagram and say, ah, in the end, you take the escape route. You take a T is defined as being an E. That's one of the options. But what about E then? Ah, well, here's a classic example then of something that doesn't lead on to another rule, it leads in tree terms to a leaf of the tree, a terminal symbol that goes nowhere else. And the one I'm hoping is there is just a semicolon. Of course, you've spotted that the picture is completed. Refer back to the automaton again. There's also a right recursive option to say, yes, accept any digit and go back into T. So you're going back into yourself again. But equally, you can now write at the bottom here, and it's in the handout. We will do all of this in a linked handout. So do read the info block of this video, find out where the handout is, download it, read it. You'll find in this complete thing. I've also said a letter can be anything from A to Z or capital A to capital Z. A digit can be anything from 0 to 9. That's the way you finish off that grammar. This encourages you to think, as computer scientists say, top down. You start with the purity of the abstraction of a sentence and then you develop the detail below it. Automata really are trying to show you the whole picture. You can, for me, from an automaton, get a rather, it's a bit top down, but you can always get more of an idea of how all this is built up in sequential steps going through it. There's nothing very magic then now, it's just emphasizing what I said at the start. To every machine picture of a circle in the hierarchy, there is a corresponding grammatical expression of it. It's just that as we'll go out through the Chomsky hierarchy, the machine interpretations become more complicated and more involving this magic thing called memory as an ancillary to what state is your machine in. Down here in type 3, where we are at the moment, all we're saying is, all you get is your states, and yes, you've got to model those correctly, but you don't need ancillary memory for any purpose. Later on, we'll find that we do. The a hierarchy where, as you go inside, you make less and less demands on what you need. And if you look... So we can even eliminate cast shadows, which would be cast by direct sunlight.